Age of Radio. Episode of Missy and I are talking about being emotionally available. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. episode of On Finding Peace. This is the podcast where Missy and I talk about practical tips and techniques that you can do on a daily basis to find your inner peace and happiness. And today we're going to be talking about how we can be emotionally available or maybe on the flip side, how or why some of us aren't. Um, But before we get into that, how are things uh, going down in your sunny part of the world? It's actually really nice. Um, today it's a pretty pretty nice day out. A little humid, a little too much for me to be outside. My hair will poof. So I uh, figured I'd better <laughs> stay inside in the AC today. Um, but how about you? It looks like you might be outside or on your on your back lanai there. Yeah, I'm still inside. We're uh, a bit cloudy and in the 40s, I guess. So not quite really? yet where I can sit outside and yeah. enjoy, but I, I did see through your uh, window back there. It looked like a lot of sun coming through. So, oh, yeah, no, um, yeah, but no, the sun is trying here, but last couple of days have been cloudy and rainy and, you know, great for reading, great for resting, great for reflecting yeah. or catching up on work, which right, right. that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, Netflix is in chill, as they say nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I just, I was, you know, on my walk this morning, and uh, as I was telling you, I had on a shirt that said emotionally unavailable, which I clearly am not that kind of person, but I just thought it was a really <laughs> cute shirt. And I was like, you know, that would be a great podcast idea, because, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things going on right now in the world, not that that's what we're here to discuss, but that kind of has people shut down. And, um, you know, I just thought it would be uh, a good time for us to maybe discuss, you know, what being emotionally available looks like and what being unemotionally available might look like. And, um, you know, so how you can kind of flip flop and go from being open to, you know, or, you know, from being closed to being open and um, receiving all the love you deserve. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. But I, I definitely agree. I mean, the, the way things right now are going in the world, you know, many people, their stress and anxiety is up, uh, you know, depending, you know, where you live and how informed you're trying to be. And um, yeah, you know, there, there's a lot of things we could be covering to, you know, try to help people. But I, I think this topic of trying to, you know, be emotionally available, you um, you know, to each other, especially during times of uncertainty. Um, although I guess we could say every time is uncertainty since I mean, we don't was, have a future. You know, but... That popped right into my head. You, uh, we were on the same page there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we, it, it, just as I said that, I'm thinking, well, what difference does that make? Um, but I, I think we all know what I mean by that, <laughs> that there, there's a, a deeper level of uncertainty. Um so, yeah, you know, how, how to be emotionally available to, you know, ha- help each other to get through this, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, life in general, you know, I mean, maybe at one point when everybody's listening to this, they could uh, sit back and go, what are they talking about? The world is at peace. I, I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, that'd be amazing, <laughs> right? And, and one of the things that I believe that emotions are really like part of that internal guidance system that I believe that we all have and we have access to. And when we shut off our internal guidance system, you know, and become closed, then we don't have the guidance from, from the right direction, right? You know, from, from the place where we're, we know everything is always going to be okay and it's always going to work out for us and we're always going to be successful, which then causes us to have more stress, more anxiety, depression, and turmoil in our life, right? And that doesn't lead us to peace. So it's, um, 
you know, I have, and, and I don't mean to sound special when I say this, there are so many people on this planet that do have, I have um, empathical abilities, so I can feel other people's emotions. So when it comes to the things that are going on, you know, if I'm in a room with somebody else and they're anxious over, maybe they're getting ready to give a speech, right? And, you know, most people get very nervous or excited, if you will, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I can feel that, like I can, I can literally take on their energy and be like, oh my God, why am I so nervous? I'm not getting up there, you know? <laughs> and I've learned that I used to resist and push it away. Like, let me put the wall up. I don't want that. I don't want to feel that. So get them away from me, right? And um, you can't really block off energy. You just can't. And so I really wasn't doing anything but drawing it to me as I was resisting it. And um, so I've learned just to be open to everything and then energy flows the way that it's supposed to flow. And when it does that, then it doesn't attach itself to you. You don't have to carry around other people's baggages. You don't have to carry around your baggage of shame, guilt, anxiety, depression, whatever it is, you know, Mm -hmm. that you've literally closed yourself off to feeling. You just kind of can sit in the, okay, that's just energy. It's just moving. And then that emotion, if you will, which is, energy in motion. That's the way I see emotion, right? It's energy in motion. If we open ourselves up to it, then it'll pass through. It's like, you know, when you're washing your hands, the water falls off and falls through. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't stick to your hands, right? It, you know, it'll dry eventually. It goes away. And then we have the ability to just be like, oh, okay, well, that was an interesting experience. Not one I particularly favor maybe, but it's over and I'm through it, right? But the more we resist, the more it persists. And you knew I was going to say that. (laughs) I I was waiting to somewhere. uh, (laughs) You know, maybe we need to to blast something on the video screen of, of, you know, this that says, you know, like, write this down. And then you can say that phrase, you know. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no, I, I... completely agree with you know with what you're saying that you know it's letting all of the energy around us just kind of be you know and and what it is what it is and that's the way i look at mindfulness and when we talk about being you know present in the moment and some people you know misinterpret and say well mindfulness is a naive way of looking at the world because you're always trying to find you know the positives and but not really You know, I mean, if you're living in the moment, sometimes the moment isn't a a positive. And and I hate to use positive negative, but just for the sake of this. But, you know, sometimes the moment does have its challenges and, you know, the the energies are are not flowing as well. (laughs) And, um, you know, it's harder for us to get through it. But what mindfulness does allow us to do is to at least sit in those emotions, not to be that avoidance you know so kind of being true to self and and that's what i always look at is what inner peace is you know it's when you know i'm being true who i am in my thoughts and actions with the world around me then i'm in connection and if i'm in connection then i have peace but if i'm not connected in interiorly and exteriorly then um, i i can't be at peace you know i'm I'm disconnected there there's not that uh, joint there. So that to me is the whole basis of, of the mindfulness of just kind of sitting still and um, feeling what you're feeling. You know, don't try to change the feeling or, you know, say, well, I don't like this, so I'm going to go feel happy. Well, you can't just feel happy. You know, it's one of those things where, well, how do you change things around to begin to you know, feel happy, but it's not just, well, I don't like this. So I'll be blank. Um, No, you have to work on that. And working on that means going through whatever it is that you're feeling at the moment, whether you like it or not. So, so I prefer to say walking through it because work to me, a lot of people think work is hard and it has Mm. a a negative connotation, if you will. Right. And so if we say walking, walking is usually pretty easy for most people you know, and it seems like, you know, okay, I'm going through this, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Where your attention go, your attention goes where, wait, um, where your attention is, is where your energy flows. I'm not saying it right, but that's the point. And that's what most people do is we focus on the negative, like 
you know, unfortunately, it's the aches and pains. It's the I don't have enough money. There's scarcity. There's there's arguments. There's negativity in the world, right? And instead of focusing on the things that are right in the present moment, I have air to breathe. You know, I have, yes, I have a sunny day, but I'm in the air conditioning. You know, I get to experience luxuries in life that a lot of people don't. And and to me, mm-hmm. you said it. You hit the nail on the head but you said it in a different way than I would normally say it. You said it as experiencing the self. And to me, that's your connection with God. And you can only Mm. experience that in the present, in the present moment. And so that's what we want to do is basically move all of our crap out of the way, which is really like the thoughts that we, we as our little selves have and just allow the extension of the energy that's already in us to flow through us and love and accept and be compassionate towards others. And if we can't, if we can't do that, that's when we're shutting ourselves off. And there's yeah. it's not something's wrong with you, right? That's, that's what a lot of people, I have to fix it. Well, what do we do to fix it? How? It's really just, it's a relaxation. There's nothing that you need to do. You just get to remember who you are and that connection is always there that the only thing that's holding you from that connection is the thoughts that you think you're separate, you know? Mm -hmm. And, And so each individual that I come in contact with, I want to look at as God, right? I'm God, they're God. And I don't say God in a religious sense. I say God as that universal energy. And I want our listeners Mm -hmm. to know that because I know that some people may have a negative religious, you know, connotation towards the word God. And to me, it's, you have that life force energy. I have that life force energy. Animals do, grass does, trees do. And when you think about it, that makes us all connected. And when we can see that connection, you just get to be the the conduit. You get to be the conduit. So that's how you let the energy just flow through you. And it's really a beautiful thing. It's really joyful and peaceful when you're there. As a matter of fact, I feel like I'm there right now. Thank you, Chris, because <laughs> I get to, you know, I, you get to be the person that that lands on. Right. But at the same time, it's not just, it's not me, Missy, this body that's, that's putting this information out there. It's my connection. That's, that's allowing it to come through. And in doing so I get to learn. I also get mm-hmm. to learn the information and learn how to be more open. I learn how to be more loving and caring and compassionate and, and, and see people without my physical eyes. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I, I do like the point that you bring up about, you know, God and that connection. Mm-hmm. Um, for those who, you know, read the traditional Bible and in, in the Old Testament, God has asked, you know, what is your name? What should we call you? And I, I think it was very profound in the answer. And, and the answer was, I am, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that seems confusing. Like, well, what kind of name is that? Yeah. Well, it's not really the name. It, it's stating what we're talking about, you know, where God doesn't actually give a physical name, you know, which then would define in many ways a God, you know, so it keeps it open. But also in the I am is stating a present state. Yeah. You know, it's not the I was, I will be. It's I am right now in this moment. This is who I am. So God's presence is in each of our moments regardless of what we're feeling, you know, and and we can help to channel that, you know, spiritual energy that God, however we want to look at him is with us in in that sense, which leads that connectedness, you know, and and I think you bring up a a very good point that I think part of the emotional availability comes through a feeling of connectedness. Mm that deeper than just that we're social creatures, you know, everybody talks about, you know, well, we're social creatures and and yes, generally we are as humans and we've really recognized that through, you know, COVID lockdowns that, you know, as much as some people are introverts and and others, you know, kind of like just don't like people anymore, there's still that, you know, focus of, but we're still social creatures. We still need that connectedness to another. And that I, I think is part of that emotional availability. How, how 
how can you share something about yourself without having that ability to be connected? Mm. But I think it's that circle. It, it's, you know, you, you need the connection to be able to be emotionally available, but then your emotional availableness is also going to enhance and enrich that connectedness. So what's really funny is you were saying social creatures, right? Social. I was hearing soulful when you said it the oh. first few times. And I was like, isn't that nice. interesting, right? Because that's, you know, to me, that connection comes from our soul, right? And mm -hmm. we, we feel sometimes alone, right? If we're physically by ourselves, do you know that's, you know, I, I'm quote unquote introverted, right? And that's where I find my connection to be able to go out and world, right? And some people don't feel that way. They find it from the outside, you mm -hmm. know, they find their connection that way. Regardless, I need people. I know I need people. I need people because they're teachers to me, right? There's something that there's questions I'm asking, mindful questions to myself, to my inner connection. And my interaction with people really is the way that I get it a lot. And, you know, so I try to learn from each person that I work with, whether it's um, a business or my children, my family, anybody like that I come and encounter with, even at the grocery store. You know, I right. went to the grocery store and <laughs> I was telling, I was telling um, some ladies that I am in a group with, like, I am just like throwing love bombs at everybody. Hi, how you doing today? How's it going? What's up? You know, and some people are like, what, what do you go away? Like, leave me alone lady. But if I catch their eye, then I'm going to say hello. I'm going to smile. I'm going to, I'm going to love them. Right. And there's some people that, that you just don't, you know, you're walking in a world sometimes with your blinders on. And I will not tell you that I'm not guilty of that because I am as well. I mean, I've, we mm -hmm. all fall asleep. Right. But the response, the reaction, the feeling, the return, you know, the reciprocal energy, the passing of the energy, like that's all the beauty of the moments that we get to experience in life. And, you know, we get to be grateful for it all. You don't have mm -hmm. to be grateful, but you have an opportunity. So that's what I mean by you get to, right? You have an opportunity to be grateful for whatever you're going through. And you might not see now in this present moment what the foresight is. Sometimes in the present moment, you can see what the hindsight is, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I know why that happened, but we're not future predictors, the majority of us, right? We can't see into the futures. We don't know how it's going to happen, what's going to turn out as a result. But really, I want to do what feels good. I want to do what I love. And that's yep. what I love. I love brightening people's day. I love smiling at them. I love laughing, you know, and and that to me makes me emotionally available, you know, to have mm -hmm. those kind of crazy, weird, awkward, funny conversations with people that most people, even as a businesswoman, I have these conversations and most people are like, I never thought I'd be having that kind of conversation with you. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm a human being and I find humor in everything, even the things that really haven't been quote unquote positive at the time that they were happening. Right. They're, they're funny to me now. Like I have some of the, those stories that I'm like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Can't believe that happened. <laughs> you know? But yeah, look, I mean, I just, I like to just press on the fact that when you're um, emotionally unavailable, you're missing out on the point, I feel like, I feel like the point of life, the enjoyment, mm -hmm. the pleasure, the ability for God to experience life as Chris, or the ability for, the, for life to experience life as Missy, right? And no matter who you are, you have that ability. I'm not special, Chris is not special. We have the ability, each and every one of us, to experience it the way that we choose to experience. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I hope that you choose to experience it available. And the, the thing that just came to my mind as you were saying, I was actually going to mention something else, but just as you were finishing that up, something else popped into, into my head. It seems that to me, when we're talking then about the social, and what you had just mentioned, it's the difference between the observer of life 
and the interactor with life. Yeah. Which also could be subjective because yeah. one of the things, you know, to mention, I, I think it's important that for those who might be listening, who, who say, well, I, I'm not typically emotionally available. And does that mean I have a problem? No. It does exactly. not mean you have a problem. Not at all. That's nope. Being it you. just means that's who you are. Yeah. Now, I, I think there's growth moments, you know, and, and, you know, if you're totally emotionally unavailable, might want to examine and reflect on why. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think we need some combo of the observer and the interactor, you know, that, I think we need some people who like at a party can just sit back and observe what's going on, reflect upon it, see how everything interacts within the the bigger scope of maybe the world act accordingly. Um, But it also brings up the point, I think, and, and this is more, I think the counselor in me, you know, when you talk about people being emotionally unavailable, that usually means they have a wall up. Mm -hmm. So the counselor to me looks at that and says, all right, the wall is keeping people out or keeping emotional scarring out because you're not taking risks. But a wall keeps things in too. So I think one of the things, you know, looking at is are we putting up a wall to keep things in or are we putting up the wall to keep things out? So I like that you just said that because here's what comes into mind immediately when you said the wall is fear. Whether it's fear of Mm. people knowing who you are internally or fear of, you know, what's going on externally, there's fear there, right? And to me, that's not spirit led. That's not love based thinking. That's fear based thinking. And um, and I have a great example and I'll use my own life because that's the only one I know um, is that I was a runner and never wanted anybody to ever see me cry, right? I would just, you know, it didn't matter if it was good emotions or bad emotion. I was stuffing that shit down. Excuse my language, but I was stuffing it down. I didn't want people to, to see me as weak, right? Because not that anybody in particular taught me that it was weak. I just got that impression. Like I, I was not supposed to do it, right? Mm-hmm. And so I like a fight or flight. Like I'm either, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm physically getting out of here or I am running or whatever. I just don't want to be in front of anybody when I'm upset. And then I let the wall down and, and I sobbed and I, I mean, cathartically cried. Not that I'm saying everybody has to do that. I'm just using this as an mm-hmm. example is that I did it in front of a, a group of 21 strangers and mm-hmm. There was so much love coming to me. And I realized the problem really, I mean, not that it was a problem, but it was really a great realization, I guess, that that I didn't want to receive it. I didn't think I was worthy of receiving that love. And so the vulnerability and not sharing my vulnerability kept me from receiving the love because everybody thought I had everything together all the time, all the time. Oh, she's got it together. Don't worry. She's fine. And I pretty much do a lot of the times, but then there's that moment that you don't. And, and it's nice to know that being vulnerable isn't as scary as it used to be because I've done it before. Now I've like, oh, I have a different experience, right? I've tried something new, which could be a great listener challenge. We haven't done one of those in a minute, but right. We get to try something new. And so, so that would be something that I would consider is like, you know, Maybe you're not going to tell the love of your life how, how wonderful they are and spout poetry. Maybe you're not. But, you know, maybe you can, you know, make an intimate moment, make, make something, you know, a little bit softer than, than the hard exterior that you might normally portray, you know. And mm-hmm. um, it's just baby steps because if, yeah. if you try to dive in, sometimes you'll get there. And then don't get me wrong, every time you dive in, you get there. But then it becomes scarier because you're paralyzed thinking, oh my gosh, I have to be all in about this. Sometimes people like to gradually walk and use that inner guidance system to tell you 
how you're going to walk. Are you going to take a leap or are you going to just take a baby step? You know, mm -hmm. and no way is wrong. Not even, even being emotionally unavailable is not wrong. It's, mm -mm. it's who you are. And from an experience of having emotional availability, I think it's amazing. And I would love to see people have that if, if that's something that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, you know, when you're saying the vulnerability that that word in and of itself evokes it, fear and, you know, like I, I'm, I can't be vulnerable, but, <laughs> you know, I, I think what people, where it would be helpful to people to, to maybe reflect on is if that is your reaction or if you do have a wall up when it comes to emotional availability, try to reflect on where that came from. What, what experiences taught you that the wall was necessary mm. or that vulnerability doesn't work? And, and I, I think what we find, and I, I don't want to sound overly counselorish by saying, go back to your childhood. Yeah. But for a number of us, <laughs> you know, going, going back to that and, and just noticing when you were, because, you know, especially as kids, I mean, they're, they're pretty much always emotionally available. I mean, you know what's going on in most kids, yeah. you know, thoughts yeah. and feelings. Um, but at some point during that time, the response that you get from being emotionally vulnerable is either going to encourage that mm. or is going to tell you stop doing that. Right. And then once you learn that and then move more into young adulthood, adulthood, a lot of times then that stays with you. And, and then you just become where, you know, well, I can't become emotionally vulnerable, um, but I don't really know why. Yeah. Kind of reflect on where that came from, because knowing that might help you to begin to chip away at the wall. And, and I think that's the important piece, you know, that we chip at the wall. At least for me, I'm not saying rip the wall down because that may be too much emotionally <laughs> to just rip that down and go at it. Unless you want to, I'm not going to stop you. But I'm just saying that, you know, chipping away at it, causing leaks here and there, um, causing maybe a window to appear instead of a big door, uh, you know, things like that that can let you know that maybe in the past it wasn't good or positive for me to be emotionally vulnerable and available, but that doesn't mean in the present, that's the same situation, mm. you know, and, and who you're doing it with today is not who you were doing with it back then. So, you know, I think keeping that in mind and, and trying it, let, letting that little leak and, and see what happens. And yeah, you might be putting in windows and then eventually doors and, Big gates. A good conversation. Really, it's such a good conversation. And it really reminds me because like our story is our story, right? And each of us, maybe let's say your parents got divorced. My parents were divorced when I was young. And I might have one uh, perception. You might have a different perception, totally different. And we could be siblings. I mean, it's not like, you know, like we both went through the exact same thing, but you have one mm -hmm. idea, I have a different idea. So so we really kind of make up those thoughts, whether they're positive or negative. And our story is just our story. So yeah. I like to say that responsibility in the world has a totally different meaning, but responsibility to me means your response to the situation, right? Which includes your thoughts, your behavior, and your, and your mm -hmm. attitude. That's it. And um, I, I think that's huge because when you consider it that way, there's a pinprick in, in the, the solid foundation of what that story is that you can possibly rewrite it, you know, yep. and, and that's what those little tiny perception shifts become to help you turn things around and see things differently. So, yeah. And, and that's where I totally agree that, you know, when we look at like what I was saying, you know, you, you learn a certain behavior or response, you know, so I put the wall up because yeah, in the past, being emotionally vulnerable did not give me a positive, <laughs> you know, but correct. That doesn't mean that I can't learn a new way Yeah. and opening oneself up now to different people 
more than likely gives you a different result. Right. And that's why I think it, it's a it's a, a good challenge, you know, to to try to be even on the smallest ways vulnerable, try to be emotionally available and test the waters. Mm. What response do you get? Because you might get a whole different response than you used to. And then you start to say, maybe this isn't so bad. See, and then I can open the crack more and I can open it more. And I, and, and then, you know, maybe get to the point where I don't even remember having that wall. Yeah. And, and that's it. It Maybe it served you then, but does it serve mm-hmm. you now? You know, and, and I'm also a firm believer in the belief. If the belief is that people always hurt me or people always steal from me or people always cheat on me, then guess what you're going to create in your future because you're creating right now in the present. And that's a thought that's rolling around in your subconscious. Your conscious yep. mind is going to create it in your physical reality. And so, you know, you can rewrite that story. You can start to believe something differently. And once you start to look at life differently, you start to find the evidence in life that things are different. Really, I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. again, whether it's whether it's a movie that you're watching or a person that you're interacting with or people that you're involved with, sometimes I think people, you know, get upset because people leave, right? People move on in their life, maybe they get busy, they have children, they move on, they have families and college and whatever. I think that it's really important to remember that they come into your life for that teaching moment, right? And some of them are there forever. They're the highly paid actors and actresses in your, in your life, but others are just, you know, sub roles or, or what's the word I'm looking for is, you know, the the Um, extras, extras, right. You know, so, so, so they're not going to stay long, even though, you know, we're like, Oh man, that was a great interaction. I really like that person. Wish they'd come back around more. You might not ever hear from them again. You might, might not, Mm -hmm. but but like you have to keep your vibration higher to be able to attract the, the good things. And that really all begins yep. with your thoughts. Yeah. And, and what we want to focus on, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you want to focus on keeping a solid wall up, then you're going to have a solid wall. You know, if, if you want to focus on everything negative in life, then life is going to be negative. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's really what we want to focus on and, and not like I was saying earlier, not in a naive way, you know, of, of saying, well, life is always wonderful um, yeah. because it's not, but it's not always bad either. You know, so life isn't both extremes always, you know, there, there's a, a middle ground. Yeah. yeah it's really, so, I like yeah, that. It, it's how we want to view it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all have highs and lows, every single one of us. But again, your responsibility is your response to the highs and the lows. I mean, because Mm -hmm. just because it feels better doesn't mean that it is better, right? Because we don't know what it's for. Um, As a matter of fact, I was listening to something the other day, and I I probably don't have it verbatim, but it was like, you know, um, man's horse got out, right? And and the town was like, oh no, that's horrible. And next thing you know, six horses came in, in, in the next day into his field, wild horses. And they were like, oh, that's great. And then the next day, the son got kicked by one of the horses and he broke his leg. And then everybody's like, oh no, that's horrible. And then the next day the draft came in and couldn't take his son because he had a broken leg. Oh, oh that's wonderful. Well, you don't ever know. Right. And that's not, mm-hmm. I, I just heard that from, from somebody, but you don't really that's ever know one. what it is. And so if we just be with whatever it is and let the feelings flow and let the emotions go, then, then we'll be on to the next. And the law of mm-hmm. rhythm is like a pendulum swing. Right. And so yep. sometimes we are the pendulum. We're like at the high, at the low, at the line, high and low, but sometimes we can stand and observe the pendulum swinging and we don't have to get into the high and low of emotions. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. So we're, we're not going to have one thing all the time. You know, when, when, you know, we talk about maintaining inner peace, that's that deeper level than that happiness, you know, because I can still be connected with myself and 
my spirituality and, you know, maybe keep people around me and life is falling apart, you know, so I'm definitely not happy, but I can still be at peace through all that because of my connectedness on all levels of my life. Yeah. So uh, I think that's that important, you know, area to look at is, is happiness is going to come and go and, you know, good times, not so good times, they're, they're going to come and go, but through it all, you know, I, I believe, and even through my, you know, experience, you can still maintain an inner peace through all of it, regardless of, of what you're feeling. I, I have a saying in, in, well, I don't, but um, I study A Course in Miracles, and one of the sayings in the book when we do our lessons every year is, I know not what this is for. Mm. And, you know, and when you remember that when you're going through anything, it, it's a... Uh, it's really peaceful because then mm -hmm. you're, you're the voice, the small voice, not the, not the larger mind, but the little mind says, Oh, this is horrible. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is bad. And you go like, I, I know not what this is for. And, and uh, that voice just shuts up. It's so nice. I mean, you know, sometimes it takes saying it a few times, but mm -hmm. when you really embody that, you go like, okay, well, whatever it is, is perfectly ordained and 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 i'm just gonna go with it and i'm gonna trust that i i, I have some higher intelligence that's gonna lead me to whatever knowing whatever it's for exactly yeah. we, we don't always have to know the why no for sure but we want to don't we <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> well that was great i really enjoyed that talk today chris um and i hope I yes thank you too. And we want to thank you guys for listening and, and, um, you know, please comment, share, like, and, and, uh, you know, if you have comments or, or things that you'd like to add to this conversation, you know, we we're always willing to hear from you. Exactly. You know, and comments help to make the connectedness as we're talking about. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we know people are out there listening and we, we would love to know what your thoughts are on, uh, you know, these topics and what we're saying and whether you agree, disagree, have a different viewpoint, you know, that that's all part of our connectedness, all part of our conversation. And, uh, you know, that that would be more than wonderful to, to hear. So definitely appreciate all of you who are listening. And if you do like this, please, uh, you know, share with all of your friends and other people who you think need to hear this. Yeah. All right. Take care. All right.